So, after three years of trying to record this or feeling like I should, I'm finally doing it. And I know this is exactly what the Lord wants me to do because when my heart beats really fast like it is right now, it's always before I'm supposed to speak about something the Lord wants me to say. And it's always, whenever my heart beats really fast, it's something that the enemy doesn't want me to say and doesn't want me to share and doesn't want me to declare, but I'm being obedient to what the Lord wants me to do. And so here we are, as you can see by the title, I'm going to be talking about my testimony and what the Lord brought me out of. And yeah, I'm just gonna jump straight into it. So when I was in sixth grade, I noticed this, um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna start yeah, I'm gonna start way back, before, even before sixth grade. Um, so when I was born, I was actually born in jail. Um, my biological mom was a drug addict and she just, you know, did a lot of drugs, whether, whether it was meth or crack or whatever, drank, smoke, whatever, slept around, all of that stuff. Um, my mom was actually bisexual. Um, she, you know, after, um, when I got older, I realized, um, I found out that she was with a woman and I actually have like a vague memory of her being with a girl, like a woman. And, um, she also, as I know of, has nine of us all together. Um, but I didn't grow up with all nine of my siblings. Anyway, so around the time she had me, she was in jail. And so she had me in jail and I was then by the grace of God, um, adopted by a friend who she knew of um yeah i was adopted by a friend who she knew of and it was a woman that babysat um, me and some other um kids who are now my brothers and sisters who were adopted into the same family i was um and also a couple other of my biological brothers and sisters that i was able to grow up with um over the years um and yeah so when i was seven my adopted mom died of cancer um and then when she died her sister then took us in which that's where i am now in new jersey um not currently living in new jersey but um the lord has me in california but came to new jersey when i was seven after my adopted mom died and my siblings and i biological um or non biological my adopted siblings who i just call my brothers and sisters um we were separated so they then had to move with my um adopted aunt her daughter and we stayed in some of us stayed in new jersey some of us moved to georgia and so yeah for from seven until 20 years old ish something like that even now still um we lived apart from each other um, and it was hard. It was hard, but, and we would always want to live together, but we just never did. Um, and as we got older, we just understood, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't feasible for my mom, my, um, my, my adopted aunt, as you, if, you know, it's complicated, but my adopted aunt, um, I call her mom now, but my mom, she, you know, was getting older and everything. And so she wasn't able to take care of all of all of us kids because it, it, it would have been like eight of us all together um and yeah so that's that part of my story um i was adopted and everything um when i was in sixth grade i noticed a um attraction for women and i didn't realize that it yeah i didn't realize it until sixth grade so fifth grade and before like i didn't I didn't have that um, I knew um, a, one other um, one of my sisters that I grew up with she was you know gay she said she was gay and so I that's how I was exposed to it I didn't know what it was until she told me and then and I was in like second grade when she told me she was and so it wasn't until sixth grade that I remember that I actually have a memory of actually being attracted to someone of the same sex and so yeah, I've internally struggled with this feeling of liking woman, of feeling like I was attracted to woman um, at a young age. And I've never um, 
I never stepped out on it. I've never uh, acted on the feelings that I've had because in my conscience and inside of me, I knew that it was wrong, but I just, I knew it was wrong, one, and two, I didn't want to act on it. I just, and I think it was because I knew it was wrong. I just knew it was wrong. Um, and so, but I still had the feelings. I still had the attraction, right? And so fast forward to 2017, I then um, come out of community college and I get a job and I get this job at the movie theater and I work there and I meet this girl and she asked to pray for me. And so I allow her to pray for me, of course, because I grew up in the church. I grew up in the Baptist church. And um, yeah, I just grew up in the church, grew up about knowing about Jesus, knowing about, knowing about God and knowing about the Bible and everything like that. But I didn't know Jesus was a personal relationship, you know. And so grew up in church and everything. And so um, she asked to pray for me. And of course, I said yes. And she was my age, but she looked like she was my age and I couldn't come to find out she was my age and so she ends up praying for me and um I allow her to and then she asked me to go to a conference and so I end up going to this conference in New York and it was it was amazing it was um the first time that I heard the gospel preached in a way that I've never heard it preached before um so the pastor or the preacher the speaker was talking about the healings in the Bible and miracles and the miracles and signs and wonders of God and how they are still for today. And he was just, you know, talking about other things in the Bible and just reading scripture and unpacking it and all the things, you know, teaching the Bible. And um, yeah, I just heard it spoken in a way that I've never heard it spoken before. And during that conference, God really got a hold of my heart. And so I then just gave my life over to Jesus. Fast forward a year later, in 2018, I then feel like the Lord is leading me to go to college. And so I just pray about it and I end up going to college. And while in college, I actually fall away from God. I'm like not reading my word every day. I'm not um, journaling. So when I gave my life to Christ, I was journaling, I was reading, I was doing all this stuff. I was like pursuing God, seeking after him, reading his word, praying, all these things. And then I go to college and I'm around all these different people, right? I'm around all these different people. And I began to not read my Bible like I was when I was home, you know, working, coming home, reading, doing whatever, you know, but being in my word daily. When I went to college, I would be around people. I would be around those my age and stuff and, you know, college, you know, college life. And it was a Christian college, actually. Um, and I won't say which college, but it was a Christian college I went to and, um, I end up getting into a same-sex relationship and looking back it was because I wasn't pursuing Jesus it was because I was not walking with him the way that I was before I left for college now some may say well if God led you to college why did he allow you to fall into sin no everything that we do there's a choice right Jesus was tempted at all points, yet he never sinned, right? Because he's God, he's perfect. And so when I was tempted, I fell into sin. I have free will. I have this, I have, I have decisions to make, right? And so when we're tempted by these things, when we're tempted by whatever it is you're tempted by, just because you're tempted, it doesn't mean, it doesn't make it sin. And just because um, you feel something, it doesn't mean that it's right, okay? So, yeah, I get into the same-sex relationship, and um, the whole entire time, I know the Lord is telling me to get out of it, and I'm, like, the whole entire time, guys, like, I am, like, trying to, like, make a deal with God, not even a deal, I was just, like, Lord, no, like, I, and I, and I heard the Lord tell me, get out of this each and every time, and I kept telling him, no, I don't want to, I want to stay in this, and I want to do what iris wants to do right and so that's when you know i just i stayed in it and i was doing it and i just felt like i just felt like i was being tormented i would have like these dreams that were like i would have scary dreams you know and they wouldn't be like 
good, you know, and the Lord speaks to me in dreams. And so when I got into that relationship, I felt like there were soul ties being made. I felt like there were all these things happening, tormenting me because I was in sin and I was rebelling against the Lord. And I knew exactly what the Lord wanted me to do, but I kept saying no. And so the Lord told me to break up with this girl. And so I do it the first time. I then get back with her. I do it a second time. I then get back with her and I do it a third time. And the third time when I do it, I was scared because I was like, Lord, if I do this again, I don't want to go back into this because I know this is not of you. And the reason why I kept going back into the relationship, guys, is because I felt bad, right? I just felt bad. I'm just, I just felt really bad to get to um, be the one to break up with um, this girl. And so I remember praying to God one day and I was just like, Lord, um, why, why do I have to be the one to break up with her? You know, why can't she break up with me? If she breaks up with me, I will be totally fine. Like I will be okay. Like I will know that it's you. I will know that you, you know, want this to happen. Like it will be like, I was saying it will be confirmation that this isn't supposed to happen, even though I knew it wasn't supposed to happen. Um, and I was just like, you know, just, just talking to God, just, you know, telling him all these things. And, um, I was like, just let her break up with me, you know, just let her break up with me. And I heard the Lord clearly t tell me, let me know, I'm calling you to do this. And then, um, during that time, I felt like the Lord was telling me as well, there are things that I'm going to call you to do, Iris to do, that I'm not calling other people to do. And that's called the consecrated life. When you are walking this life with God, it's going to be a consecrated life. There are going to be some paths that you walk down that your friends or your fr or whoever you're with aren't going to be able to walk down with you because you're walking the path of righteousness. And those that the Lord wants in your life, he will place those people in your life at the right time that you need them, right? And so anyway, I get out of this relationship finally for the third and last final time. Um, that was a lot of finals. <laughs> so I get out of this relationship for the last time um, and I just end it. And yeah, and then I end up, um, the school year ended. I had to retake a class that I failed because I was in sin and I wasn't doing my schoolwork as I should have. Um, and I retook this class. And when I retook the class, I had a dorm room to myself and it was great it was a time of time with the lord really and repenting and just crying out to him but before this i actually was on campus as the school year was ending and i kept seeing this pamphlet because whenever there's a church like whenever there's churches um near the school um students go to different churches off campus right and so they would post things like if they're having a worship night or if they're having a Sunday service or if they're having a Thursday night Bible study, they'll post it around campus, right? And so there was this one um, pamphlet that I saw posted somewhere on campus and I remember seeing the word ignite. And before I saw that pamphlet, I heard the word ignite. I heard the Lord speak to me the word ignite and I didn't know exactly what he meant. And before this, I've already heard the Lord speak to me in this type of way before so it wasn't foreign to me i already knew the voice of the holy spirit and so when i saw this pamphlet i'm like i want to go to the service and this is after i had already broken up with the girl this is at the end of the school year this is right before i go into my um summer intensive course that i have and so i end up going to this worship night at a church that i've been to a couple times and I go and it's a worship night and they're just singing and praising God and everything. And then they ask if anybody needs prayer, come up. And so I go up and there's a deacon of the church up there. And so he starts to pray over me and he starts to prophesy over me. And he starts to say, this next season of your life is going to be a season of separation. They, have, they had no idea what I was going through. This guy had no idea what I was going through. I didn't share any of this with anyone. I didn't share. No one knew that I was in this relationship. Literally no one. Um, except for her and my siblings. That's it. No one else knew about that. No one on campus knew about this. And so 
when he spoke that I was like okay so he said the next this next season of your life is going to be a season of separation he gave me the analogy of a turtle and he said the turtle goes into its shell to hide and he said you are going to be like that turtle you're going to go into a shell and you're going to be under God's wing and God is going to have you in this shell with him but he's going to rekindle the relationship with you and him with you and Jesus and so when he spoke that I was just crying and I was just receiving it because I knew I knew exactly what that meant I knew that meant that I couldn't stay in Florida I knew that meant that I had to I just said the state it's okay <laughs> I knew that that meant that I couldn't stay um, where I wanted to go. <laughs> and um, I knew that I had to go back home. And so after the summer intensive, I end up going home. And we always go to Georgia every year to visit my siblings, like I told you guys about, because we were separated at a young age after my adopted mom passed away. Um, we always go to Georgia, but I couldn't because I needed to get a job. My mom said, no, you can't come. <laughs> And I knew it was the Lord. It was like the Lord was all behind this, right? And my mom would never say anything like that. But, you know, I just knew it was the Lord telling me I couldn't go. I needed to stay home. And so I stayed home and it was just me, my dad and my older brother. And basically when it's just us three, like there's basically no one in the house. Like I basically have the house to myself um, because... Um, I share a room with two of my other sisters and so I had the room to myself which was amazing because that was the time that I actually started me and God's relationship like the deacon said at the church started to rekindle right sorry um and yeah and so that happened and God pulled me out of that and that whole entire summer I was just praying praying to God and I was just asking the Lord to just show me exactly what he want, wants me to do and um, I was just repenting and saying sorry to the Lord and telling him like I'm sorry and so even during this relationship I actually read a scripture during like while I was inside of that that same-sex relationship I read a scripture and I actually pulled it up here because when I was in this sin I like was, would still read my Bible and stuff. Um, and every time I read my Bible, it would convict me. Um, and so I remember coming across this one verse or a couple verses in Romans one. And I remember me and, um, me and my ex, we would always talk about like, Oh, um, is this wrong? Is this what God wants? Um, if we love each other, like, why is this wrong? You know? And now that I think about it, it wasn't love. It was all lust. And, <laughs> it's so crazy because only Jesus is love. Jesus is the true love that we are all searching for. And so anyway, when I was in that relationship, I came across these verses. And I'm just going to read them here. Um, it says in verse 24, Romans 1, 24 through 27. It says, therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Verse 25. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the create the creature rather than the creator who was blessed forever amen for this reason God gave them up to vile passions for even their woman exchanged the natural use for what is against nature verse 27 likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due and so when i read that guys when i was in this i just knew immediately that this is not what god wants me in right and i kept asking god doesn't even talk about homosexuality in the bible like i don't even think like it says homosexual homosexuality is wrong right it says it right here even back in Jesus' times, even back in these times, people were struggling with homosexuality, bisexuality, lust. All of this stuff that we think is new now is not new. It's always been around for years and generations and generations and generations. And um, there's something else in here. In my Bible, it's like a study Bible almost. And so it has like this like in the margin, 
Um, and the question is, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? And the answer is, the Bible says that it is an abomination for a man to lie with a man as with a woman, or a woman to lie with a wo woman as with a man. The Bible says that because of a certain, uh, because of certain abominations, such as homosexuality, a land will vomit out its inhabitants. The Apostle Paul called it shameful, the result of being given up by God to vile passions. So, I wanted to just talk about how the Lord really convicted me of this sin during the time when I was in it because I wanted to justify and I would talk to my sister who I knew was in this um, in same sex um, attract like she was she same sex attracted and I would talk to my friend who I knew was in a same sex relationship as well like I knew that I was talking to these people that would encourage me to keep going because I would literally come to them and be like I don't think this is right but like I still want to like do this you know and I knew that they would always bring me back to being with this person that I knew was wrong and so I wanted to justify my sin and I knew that the Lord was telling me no this is not what I have for you I need you to make this decision and I need you to do it and I remember being in this relationship and I remember telling God Lord I don't want to I don't want to break up with her because I don't want to be the one to hurt her. And the Lord clearly 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 responded to me and said, "You are already hurting her because you're dragging her to hell. You're dragging her and yourself to hell." And when he spoke that, I was I just I just knew. I just knew exactly what he meant. I just knew exactly what he meant. And um yeah so that happened and i also just want to end with this guys as i was talking about how this has been a part of generations for generations for generations for generations the lord is calling some of us some of you guys to get out of this sin to get out of your feelings to get out of your flesh and to start walking in the spirit and so I want to just say this is that the Lord has told me that I am to be the generational curse breaker off of like from my family because there's a generational curse on my family with anger, with depression, with homosexuality, with identity issues. And it's not just my family, it's other families around the world that I know is going through the same exact thing that I'm going through and that my family is going through, right? And so I feel like there's a lot of you that know that you know for a fact that you were supposed to get out of this and yet you're still in it. And so I just want to encourage you with this video because there's a Bible verse that actually says, and I wrote it down here so that I could read it for you guys. And it says, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. And so this verse is basically just talking about that the people, us, the people did not, or we overcame, we overcome. This is how we overcome. This is how we defeat the enemy. We overcome by the blood of the lamb. What is the blood of the lamb? The blood of the lamb is Jesus Christ. He has paid our sins on Calvary, on the cross. And so since he paid the price on Calvary, on the cross, therefore we have the authority to, or we have the authority to walk in what he's already paid for, but we have to be forgiven first. We have to receive his love, right? And then the next part says, and the word of their testimony. And so like I'm sharing my testimony or others, pastors, preachers, teachers, just regular people people just people in general sharing their testimony like i'm doing with you you guys can share your testimony with those that you are around your friends your family your co-workers it doesn't matter who share your testimony with those when god brings you out of something that you know and it doesn't have to be this it can be a different type of any type of testimony that the lord has done for you right and so we overcome by the blood of the lamb salvation the word of the testimony the word of our testimony what god has brought us through and what he has done for us and it says and they did not love their lives they did not love their lives even to the death what does that mean that means that even if it comes to dying for your faith it doesn't matter peter a disciple was crucified upside down because he didn't think he was worthy enough to be crucified the same way that Jesus was crucified. 
And so I just want to leave you guys with that. And um, one more scripture, actually, I want to read um, that really encouraged me over these past couple of months, actually being on the road and being on tour um, and traveling and preaching the gospel through music. Um, this is a verse or verses that has inspired me and has encouraged me. So Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I want to leave you guys with that scripture, um, but I also want to say I was adopted here on earth, but more so the Lord has adopted me into his family the best family that you could ever be a part of that i could ever be a part of and so i'm just on here to just let you guys know that there is hope in jesus that there is there is love there is redemption there is restoration in the name of jesus and so if you need to receive jesus you can do that today you can do that right now and so I'm going to leave a prayer down in the description so that you guys can pray the prayer. But it can be as simple as, Lord, help me get out of this sin, just like I was. I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get over these feelings. I don't know how I'm going to get over not liking this person or feeling like I like this person. I don't know how, but Lord, I know you can do it. And I put my trust in you. I have no other hope to depend on. I have no other person to depend on. I have no other thing to depend on. But I know, God, that you are the one that can help me when I'm in trouble. And so I prayed that prayer, guys. And the Lord has definitely brought me out of a really, really, really dark place. The Lord brought me out of depression, out of anxiety, out of separation anxiety, out of um homosexuality out of feeling rejected and i'm still dealing with some of these things now guys like there's still temptations sometimes i get the temptation to think that i'm rejected or think that i'm not wanted but the lord constantly reminds me of his word but also he reminds me that i am accepted in the beloved in him and in, in his love he's the best kind of love that i could ever have and receive and this is a daily walk with god and so it's not going to come overnight but I will tell you, once you continue to put your trust in God, just like you put your trust in people or you put your trust in food or you put your trust in, in money, put your trust in the word of God. And once you do that, your life will change. And so that's all for now, guys. Um, I may make a part two video um, telling another part of my testimony or going deeper into my testimony. But... Um, thank you guys for watching this. I pray this has blessed you in any way, shape, or form. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this so much. Thank you.